Hello, David here, and welcome to this tutorial where you will learn how to model a workpiece positioner that we can connect as an external axis with a robot in visual components. When following any tutorial, check the lesson in the Visual Components Academy. And if the download files option appears, you can download the example files. To get started, let's go to the modeling tab and from import, select geometry. We are using this step file and in the import model panel on the right, we are using mostly default options. And with the tessellation quality set to high, we click analyze below and it shows that we are importing roughly 42,000 triangles, which is a good number. If we want more or less triangles, we can adjust the tessellation quality. The feature tree is set to full, organized geometry is by material, and the up axis is the positive Z axis. Then we click import. We can see that the origin of the model is in a good location on the floor. and in the center of this shape. We are happy with that, and if you need to change your model origins, you can use the origin tools from the ribbon above. The next thing we want to check is the geometry structure we are importing. And notice how, as we click through the geometry in the 3D world, the feature tree on the left will expand to show these features. This is a nicely organized assembly file, so we get the main parts already separated. If we need to separate this feature further, to for example, create a kinematic mechanism, from the feature tree on the left, we can right click and select explode, or from the geometry group above, from tools, select the split tool to separate the geometry further. In this example, we don't need to do that. So we can now move forward and start extracting kinematic links. We select the compact position or tilt feature, and we can also select it in the 3D world. Then right click, and from extract, select extract link. A new link will appear in the component node tree above the feature tree on the left. And that part of the geometry is now under this new link one. Then selecting the root node from the component node tree above, we can see that there are two pieces of geometry remaining. And selecting the rotary table from the 3D world, and again right clicking from extract, select extract link. And now we have link one and link two above. And in the root of the component, only the base geometry remains, along with some placeholders for the geometry we just extracted. Right clicking anywhere in the feature tree, and selecting remove empty will remove those. And now we can define the links. So selecting link one from its properties panel on the right, we can rename it to link tilt. And we want to set the location of this link as the pivot point for the rotation. Currently the link origin is down here. So the rotation would occur around that point, which is incorrect as it should rotate around the cylinder there. So we need to move the origin to that level. Selecting the blue Z axis arrow and dragging it up will actually move the geometry inside of this link tilt. Double clicking the blue Z icon in the link properties on the right will reset the Z axis elevation to zero, returning the geometry to the floor. With the link tilt selected, we will now repeat moving the origin, but instead, from the move mode group in the ribbon above, choose the selected mode, so we can modify only the link and not its features. We can now freely move this origin up while the geometry remains in the same location. And while using our mouse to move the Z axis arrow holding the shift key, Drag the mouse cursor over the edge of the cylinder to align it with its center. To double check the alignment, we can select the left side view from the view selector or from the 3D world toolbar, select the orthographic view. 
and set the render mode to wireframe. And as we can see, the origin is in the center of the component. And returning to shaded mode and disabling the orthographic mode, our link tilt is in the correct position. And from the link properties on the right, we can modify the joint type from fixed to rotational along its local red axis, which is the positive x axis. Under joint properties, we will modify the name to E1 for external joint 1, and to associate it with a controller, select New Server Controller. For both the minimum and maximum limits, the half rotation of 180 is OK, and for the maximum speed, we could add, for example, a full rotation of 360 for one second, and the maximum acceleration and deceleration can be four times the maximum speed. So we enter 360, an asterisk, and four for a total of 1440 per second, so we would reach the maximum speed of 360 in 0.25 seconds. And now moving on, let's select Link 2 on the left and rename it to, for example, Link Rotary. And if we now select the Interact tool from the manipulation group in the ribbon above, we can now interact with our first link, Link Tilt, along the positive x axis we defined. However, as you can see, the rotary table does not move along with the link tilt feature below it. Using the reset simulation control to return the link tilt to its default position, we now need to make this link rotary a child of the link tilt. From the manipulation group, we will return to the move mode and enable show from the structure group above, which will display the kinematic chain we have defined. The origin of the component in link rotary is still below, in the same position as the component root, while the origin of link tilt is up here. We should select link rotary and drag and drop it over link tilt. However, the rotary table now disappears, and if we zoom out, we can see that the rotary table has now been elevated as it inherited the origin location of the link tilt. And since we don't want this to occur, we will drag and drop the link rotary back over the root node above. So while holding the shift key, we drag and drop the link rotary back over the link tilt, and it will then retain its position in the 3D space. And now the kinematic structure is so that our root node is here. The link tilt is up here, and link rotary is back down here, which is not correct, since the kinematic center of this link should be at the center of the rotary table. With move mode selected still active, we can freely change the location of this. So we grab the origin ring, or we could use snap from the tools group above. And once we have moved the origin to the rotary table, holding the shift key will snap it to the center of the circle. Now we need to define the joint type for link rotary. The joint type by default is fixed, so it doesn't move at all. And we will also set this joint type from fixed to rotational and on the positive C axis. And under Joint Properties, we will modify the name to E2 for External Joint 2, and we associate it with the server controller already created for Link Tilt. The minimum limit will be minus 360, and the maximum 360, allowing this joint to move a little bit more, and the maximum speed of 360, and maximum acceleration and deceleration of 1440 can be the same as for link tilt. And then selecting the interact tool so we can interact with the completed links, we can see that our kinematic chain is now completed and working.
and using the reset simulation control to return the link to its default position, what we must do next is introduce an interface so that we can connect this with a robot. Since we don't need to know the details of the interface for such a generic component as a workpiece positioner, there is a wizard we can use. So from wizards in the ribbon above, select the positioner wizard. This wizard can do robot positioners such as servo tracks or workpiece positioners like we are modeling here. The flange link should be the last link in the kinematic chain where we also add our product. And the link selection is automatically correct here so we can click apply. And as stated in the output panel below, we can now close the wizard. We can right click and select clear to remove the message and then using the close button in the lower right corner, close the positioner wizard panel. And now the model is ready to go. And returning to the move tool to finalize the model, we could make it look a bit nicer by associating some materials for it. We will hide the kinematic visualization by disabling show from the structure group above. And from the geometry group, select tools and from material, select assign. And from materials on the right, from the library tab, select for example aluminium. And click on the rotary table to assign the material to it. And do the same to the servo below it. And some other details, including the top and cover, etc. Then we will search for yellow and assign yellow cast metal to the visual components logo. And by mistake, we also assign the material to the area around the logo. And to fix this, we change the mode on the right from assign to clear and click to remove the assigned material. And for the remaining parts, the orange color basically indicates there is no material there. We can now close the Assign Material panel using the Close button in the lower right corner and then selecting the root of the component from the Component Node tree on the left and from its Properties panel on the right, set the material to, for example, Black Matte so that all sections where we didn't assign a material now get that component level material which is convenient. And with the material value selected, Using the mouse wheel, we can scroll through the available material options. And of course, we still have the aluminium and yellow materials we already defined. To quickly test the model out, let's go to the Home tab and in the eCatalog, under Models by Manufacturer, then Visual Components and Robots, drag a generic articulated robot into our layout. The PNP tool should automatically be selected and from the connect group above, choose interfaces and click on the workpiece positioner, which will change from yellow to green and then close the connect interfaces panel using the close button in the lower right corner. And if we now go to the program tab and select the robot and the jog tool, from the jog panel on the right, we can see the robot joints and below them, the external axis joints of the connected workpiece positioner. So we can simultaneously program our robot and these external axes. Beautiful. And this concludes the lesson. Thank you for watching.